Welcome back to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good. And in this case, you're in for a treat. We have one of our favorite people in the whole world. When you talk about NASCAR and race car driving, podcast host, so much more STEM advocate, we're gonna have a lot of fun conversations with Julia Landauer. So Julia, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. So you've got an amazing story when you talk about being a race car driver, and this starts at a very early age for you, but give us a little bit of your background in terms of how you got into driving race cars. Yeah, so I'm from New York City, which not a lot of people consider New Yorkers to be you know, known for being drivers, but uh, there was a go-kart track about two hours outside of the city. My parents were looking for an activity where me, my sister, and brother could all do something together. Uh, they liked that we could stay together as a family, and they loved that it was co-ed so that their girls could know what it was like to compete head-to-head against the boys. And I loved it. I loved going fast. I loved you know, the responsibility I felt with working with adults. And once I started winning, I really loved Love that and um, decided that I wanted to try to pursue it as far as I could into racing cars. So you spoke in Memphis at our Signature Speaker Series event. You shared some of this story, shared a lot of lessons learned, and we're excited. We're going to get you to Nashville at some point soon and speak there too. But give us a little bit of recap because you talked a lot about you know being a, a woman in a male-dominated field and how you've had to kind of look at things different, but still the competitive edge that you carry with you, and so. Talk about some of the lessons that you shared when you were speaking in Memphis. Totally. So that was a really fun keynote. The audience was fantastic. A lot of engagement in our Q&A afterwards. But basically, I would like to share stories that even though they're unique to my racing experience, they resonate with diverse audiences. So we talked about, you know, taking ownership and not not letting things happen to you, but seeing what you have in your control that you can change. You know, I think we talked about perseverance. We talked about, you know, how to stay enthusiastic and how to, you know, do the little things that help you keep going. We talked about preparation and how you can never be too prepared. And that's super important as as a race car driver. And to your point earlier, we also talked about allies, not only male allies for women in in male dominated spaces, spaces, but I think women being allies to women is really important and changing the narrative of what it is to be a woman in a male-dominated space because most industries are still male-dominated, but we all know that diverse perspectives and you know having different minds and different creative thoughts come into play help everyone. And so I was really, I was really jazzed up with the audience and you know, again, the great questions. And clearly your people definitely want to help each other be their best. And so that's always a fun, a fun thing to do. Absolutely. There's a lot of technology when it comes to racing and especially with the cars and all the training and the preparation that goes in as well. Everything is so much more technologically advanced these days. But while you were here, you had a chance to build robots and participate in some, you know, kind of STEM camp activities with the girls at Girls Inc., which was really cool to see. And just, you know, they were loving on you and it was awesome. But Share some of that side on the technology and why being a STEM advocate is so important for you encouraging young girls. Totally. And big shout out to Girls Inc. of Memphis. I mean, they made me feel like such a rock star and there was so much enthusiasm, which was really cool. But yeah, so I have always loved the fact that as a little scrawny kid, I was maneuvering this machine and I learned about the technological aspects of it. And it is this, you know, human and machine sport. And what I found was that I not only understood my sport and my craft better with more technical knowledge, but I also found that my teams took me more seriously. And so for me, it was always really important to, you know, showcase all the different areas that STEM subjects can relate to, whether that's, you know, coding and software, or maybe it's makeup development and chemistry and all of this stuff. So that it's such a wide variety of industries that utilize STEM. And, you know, there are our biases against women in STEM and there are, you know, you see that women and girls are less involved as the classes get higher up in school. And so really trying to show the excitement that is around STEM, I think is really important and showing that it is accessible and encouraging girls, you know, to work through the problems. And then also just for everyone, we are in a technological world. And I think each one of us will be more empowered to go after what we want to do if we have some kind of technical or scientific literacy that will help us. 
And I like the fact, you know, knowledge is power. And like you're talking about, when you understand the equipment even better than, you know, some of the others who are using it, and you can walk in and say, no, here's what needs to happen. And here's how we can tweak this. And here's how I can make us a better team. And here's how we can come up with, you know, a faster time. Like all of that gives you power, but it also too, it goes back to earning respect, the allies, all of those things, which makes you a professional. And so, Give us maybe one or two of your favorite memories. Let's start with on the track and then we'll go with off the track. But on the track, give us a favorite memory. Oh, okay. So I was actually just, uh, I just recorded a segment for my podcast about this. But in when I was 23, I was going into the last race of the season and I was so nervous. Like I felt the pressure. I was two points in the lead. You know, I thought that I was you know, that I could get the win and then I could win the championship. But in racing, anything can go wrong. You can get a flat tire. Someone can crash you out. So just the the total nerves. And I'm really proud of how I handled that on track and how I stayed cool. And I kept my eye on the big prize of winning the championship, not the race. And um, yeah, the dealing with the pressure, I was really proud. And then to win and to have the whole team celebrating and to have my family so proud. And I was so proud of myself. Um, yeah, it was really exciting. So I'll be talking about that on the podcast as well. How do you put someone in the driver's seat with you, the co-pilot? How do you make them feel what it feels like to go as fast as you go around the curve? Like talk, talk about kind of, you know, the illustrate for us the, the power of being a race car driver. Totally. And it's so challenging, right? Because, you know, a lot of us play other sports growing up. And so we know what the sport is like, but racing is so foreign, unless you're put in, you know, a high performance go-kart or maybe a car, you're not going to know what it's like. You're going to compare it to driving on the street. And it's very different. I mean, you feel the G forces on your neck and your core as you're going through the corners, you feel the G forces under braking too, to go from 185 miles an hour down to like 40 for a corner. You're feeling that, you know, it's so fast. You feel the vibrations. You you hear the the roar of the engine. You're sweating. It can be 150 degrees in the car, so it's really hot. It's this endurance sport, and you have cars all around you, and your spotters talking to you. And there's just there are so many inputs that we have to process in split seconds that it's um so invigorating and exciting and a very addicting feeling to be in the car. Physiologically, talk about what being a woman in advantage, disadvantage, what does that give you as a driver in terms of, because you mentioned there's no air conditioning. And so when you talk about kind of understanding your body and your strengths and weaknesses and putting that in place so that you can get the best out of it, what's one or two factors on that and that you've had to kind of think about or tie in? Yeah. And racing is so cool because, you know, it is one of the few co-ed sports to the highest levels and different series are, have different physical requirements. You know, I think the very top of formula one, where the driver is sitting with their arms out and there's so much G force and downforce. Um, I think that that is a little more challenging, but in sports cars or in NASCAR, where we're seated, seated a little more upright, it's not about brute strength to your point. It's about heat management. It's about, uh, you know, mental focus for a really long time. And so there really isn't that huge advantage to being a guy over, over a woman. And so there are little things like there are studies being done now to measure how efficient women versus men are at that heat maintenance. And so it looks like women's temperature might spike up a little sooner, but then they level out. And whereas the guys will continue to climb a little more. So there might actually be a little bit of an advantage. Um, I know there are some studies around women's peripheral vision, which is so important in racing um, and being maybe a little more able to see a little bit more than guys. Um, so it's interesting when you think about those little less obvious things um, in terms of the the physical and the mental aspect of racing, but um, it's tough for everyone. I want to be sure that people know how challenging it is, um, but yeah, it's really cool to train. And I believe I showed some videos at the event of some of the neurological training we do to make sure our reaction time is really fast, to make sure we're processing inputs as quickly as possible, training our eyes, um, you know, depth perception, all of that we work on to maximize our performance in the cars. Yeah. And I just think it's really fascinating. The science and going back to kind of the STEM conversation is like, even with the the heat, you know, where it's like it spikes, but then it, it levels off. Whereas men can do like stuff like that to me is just really interesting because then it's a matter of, okay, well, how do we understand what we've got? And then how do we understand how to manage that through so that we get the win at the end? And so it's, it's all back to knowledge is power, understanding strengths and weaknesses and being able to leverage that. 
Give us yeah. one off the track, you know, favorite memory that pops into your head. Cause obviously you've had a chance to speak around the world and travel and, you know, go to amazing events. So what's, what's a, a, a moment that puts a smile on your face? Ooh, I've been really lucky uh, to be able to do a lot. You know, I think, you know, definitely getting on stage and giving a keynote when the audience is super engaged and they're asking good questions. And if I'm able to make them think about things in a different way, I gave a TEDx talk when I was at Stanford and it was called Can Nice Girls Win Races? And I talked about some stereotypes against women. And when we were leaving, there were two women in front of me who were in the audience, didn't know I was behind them. And one really agreed with me and one kind of disagreed with me. And I love that I had sparked that debate and that they were pushing each other more. So that was really cool. Um, you know, I look back and I'm really proud of the time I was on Survivor because that was really challenging back in season 26. Did not thrive. Learned reality TV is not for me, but I'm really proud of that. So I feel I feel really, really lucky um, that I've been able to do a lot and deal with a lot of negative stuff. You know, it's all part of life, but it's uh it's been really cool when when what I say and my experiences that I share vulnerably and honestly with people when they spark debate and help others be their best. That's really satisfying and hopefully makes the world a slightly better place. And that leads us perfectly into your podcast. <laughs> Thank you. And so but I think, you know, what's interesting, too, is you're coming in and, you know, your career, when you look at social media and reality TV and all of these things, I'm I'm a little older. And so it's like all of those things didn't necessarily exist as I'm coming through. And so it's a very different world that you're in now in terms of authenticity, transparency, living your world in front of an audience on social media. And so, you know, I love the fact that you're putting yourself out there, especially now with this podcast in kind of a, a new, exciting way. And so go ahead and dive in and let's start talking about this amazing podcast. Well, thank you. So yeah, a little over a month ago, I launched uh, If I'm Honest with Julia Landauer. And I was really looking for a way to kind of bring more content that's really helpful and beneficial for my keynotes and help it reach more people. You know, keynote speaking is fantastic, but it is confined to the people who are in the room at that time. And so to be able, you know, you can only cover so many topics in one 45 or hour session. And so to be able to do a deep dive and tell stories and share research and give my tips, you know, I've talked about things like always asking for what you want and need and how to be concise and clear and explicit. I've talked about how watching a documentary on Netflix made me realize how many judgments I make and I judge books by their cover and I kind of had this internal reckoning. So sharing my tips on how to recognize our own biases so we don't shut out people that might might really be rich enriching our lives. And, you know, I give my hot take on Formula One and my kind of unfiltered commentary. And so I'm, I'm trying to kind of bring things I care about, topics that I have found personal growth from, that other people have talked with me about, you know, parts of my journal entries and things that I'm thinking about, and bringing it into a really cute 15 to 20 minute podcast to to just help maybe spur some new ideas for people and different ways that they can think about their lives. Because at the end of the day, I, I know that I've been privileged in what I've been able to do. And I want to share what I have learned and experienced to try to help other people live their best lives as well. Yeah. And I know even, you know, when you were in Memphis, you and I talked about podcasting and, you know, it, at first it seems so simple. And then like anything you get into it, it's like, wait, this is way more complex than I thought. And so talk about, how you've already grown from launching this podcast, because I think part of it is the technical expertise of hosting a show, you know, those pieces, the, the producing elements and hosting elements. At the same time, though, it forces you to be more introspective, to soul search, to dig a little deeper. And sometimes as individuals, you know, you fight against that, especially when you're putting it out in front of, you know, a large audience. And so talk about how it's helped you grow already professionally and personally? I had no idea that it would be so beneficial across the spectrum, right? Like one on my speaking more clearly, the first episode I recorded, I had so many, you know, you knows and ums and that's, you know, so many little filler words that do not make for good listening. And I had to do so much work to edit. I gave up and just recorded a new episode. It was too much. So being clearer and more concise and precise in how I speak is really important. Uh, learning patience in terms of, you know, if I don't like it the first time trying to fix it and being patient with myself. And again, it goes back to the preparation. The more I thoroughly outline and think about how can one theme relate to another, the easier the recording is. But yeah, I was talking with my husband because he listens to all the episodes with me before I publish them. 
And he made the comment like, oh my goodness, it sounds like you're getting really great therapy sessions with yourself because, you know, I am being introspective. And I think it's really important, especially in the age of social media, where we see highlight reels of people's lives. I think it's really important to share, share the failures, you know, so everything from, again, recognizing that I was judging people and being honest about that. Um, you know, I'll talk about, you know, times where I thought I was doing a really great job with a sponsorship pitch and I look back and it was clearly awful. So going through the details with that and how I'm getting good at rejection. Anyone in sales will appreciate that. So it's really, it's cool because I get to record it in the privacy of my own home. And so there's a comfort there, but then it's been really great to hear how it resonates with people when they've also tried things or it's so easy to get discouraged when things don't go well. But I hope that by sharing that you can always reset and start over, you, you know, you know, failure and experimenting and even if it doesn't work out is part of life and so it's uh it's been quite a journey i have a whole new appreciation for podcasters it is so much work and uh promotion is hard and you know but at the end of the day as long as it's helping a few people with every episode then it's definitely a win in my book absolutely well when you go from race car driver to speaker to stem advocate to podcast host Give us one other thing that's uh, on the horizon or one other thing that uh, is going on good in your world. Oh, you know, there's a lot of good stuff going on. I'm kind of figuring out what else I want to work on and, you know, hopefully getting some racing wherever I can, but then kind of thinking what's next and what do I want to build on and growing up is scary. I'm going to be honest. If I'm honest, um, it's, it's scary and it's also exciting and I try to remember advice that I've heard from a few people, which is, you know, when an opportunity presents itself, like, you know, think about taking it, even though it's different, even though it might not be how you envisioned your life going, like being open to opportunities um, is really exciting. So I'm learning firsthand that it is important to remember your own advice and remember other people's advice as we as we grow up and deal with adulting. Absolutely. Well, you're a change maker for sure. Wrap up with contact information. So where can we go to follow you online, access and listen to the podcast? Where do we go? Excellent. Thank you. So starting with the podcast, it's called If I'm Honest with Julia Landauer. It's on all of the streaming platforms. You can also go to my website, julialandauer.com slash podcast. Also see more of my speaking on there. I'm at Julia Landauer across the social media channels. And I love hearing from people. If you listen to the podcast, I'd love to know your thoughts. If you agree with me, disagree with me. I love getting those debates, which people already do on Twitter, especially. And yeah, I would love to hear from you. And I hope that, you know, what I'm putting out there is valuable valuable. And I so appreciate you having me on your show today. Thank you so much. Absolutely. No, the podcast is awesome. I love following you on social media. Amazing guest speaker, obviously. So love everything you're doing for sure. Once again, Julia Landauer and L-A-N-D-A-U-E-R is the, the correct spelling for the last name. So when you're looking her up online, you can find her. So Julia, thank you for all you do. Thank you for being amazing and coming on the show. Thank you, Jeremy. It means a lot.